Hello again. In the last two videos, we have seen the model development, the beam geometry definition, the material properties, the cross section of the concrete beam, and we also applied the different conditions, uh, supports, and the loadings. In this video, it's time to see how to measure model and then send the different input data to the, um, to the computational core to get our results and produce some graphical interpretations of the same ones. Well, first we need to open back our model, so we have to click here at this button and follow the folder where we have our model saved and then we open it. If you have the geometry selected but you don't see anything, you need to go to shapes and then activate the, the different shapes or spans. Then if you want to see the loads, you need to activate them also so you can see the graphical interpretation. Yeah, and then the same for the supports. Well, now first before we proceed uh, to mesh, we need to indicate uh, for each uh, shape which are going to be its uh, material properties and cross-section definition. To do that, we click at this button and then in the, in the window that it's open, we have to select the target element or the target shape that in our case can be both because we are going to apply the same material element class and geometry for the, uh, to, the both, uh, to both the spans. So here we select again the element class that we said before it was class 2 and 2D. The material, we have more, we should select the proper one. And then the geometry. So we have only one, but the same. If we have more geometries here, we should select the concrete uh, cross section. As we don't have any specific data, any specific uh, definition for our uh, beam, we don't have, uh, we have this option empty. By clicking OK, we assign all the properties to the different shapes. As you can see here in the message box, uh, Diana says that everything is OK. So then we need to define by means of clicking at this button the different meshing properties. So again, we need to select the target element or the target shape, that in our case is an edge. So we have four edges to a span. And then we need to define how to mesh these edges. So in our case, we're going to use divisions because we don't want to consider the length of the element. We prefer to choose the how many elements um, are going to have every uh, is going to have every uh, every edge so we here we can try for example with 16 and make a preview yeah you can see now the nodes of the mesh of the mesh so each edge has uh, 16 divisions so in total we have 64 yeah, maybe in that case it's not necessary that much so we can go for example for age uh, reasonable or the number that you consider so 10 or even more 25 for example so here you can see a very coarse uh, mesh but uh, for now we are going to go for um, eight uh, eight divisions for each edge so if we click ok the values are safe and then we are ready for the meshing. So if we click at this button, we are going to generate the mesh. Done. Now our model is completely done. So what uh, we need to do right now is to go to the analysis tab in the main panel and interact with the computational engine. So here, we can define the different options that we are going to, to send to the computation core to calculate the different uh, the, the, the final behavior of our beam 
following the, the conditions and the applied loads and the different geometry and materials that we define. So in, in, that, in this case, we should remove it and create it again. We can create the analysis. You can define a name for this analysis, for example, linear elastic. Okay, and then we need to create a linear elastic analysis. Structural linear static. Well, here you can see the different options. But uh, in our case, this is a linear elastic analysis, a rather simple analysis. We don't need to go to the detailed properties. So we just can continue with the and run the analysis by clicking at this button or we have also the same buttons here we can run our analysis well as you see it's uh, pretty fast so we have already the analysis run, so the computational engine has already sent all results to uh, the Diana interactive environment. So we can move to the next step. Then by clicking at the results tab in the main menu or in the main panel, we go to the results uh, specific viewing where we can just ask uh, Diana to give us some graphical interpretations over our initial uh, geometry. So the first thing here is how to show and hide the, the, form, the form or undeformed uh, shape of our geometry. Uh, then by clicking at this button, we can go to the initial shape or we can go to the deformed shape. Okay. The second that we ha you have to consider is which load case are you representing? So by clicking this comic box, you can show the different case, load case, as you see. And then the permanent. So now we can go here to the output linear elastic analysis and see the different results. As you can see, the results are split in two different groups, are grouped in two groups, uh, nodal results, so that are applied uh, or represented on the nodes, uh, at the nodes of the elements, and element results that are uh, represented at the element uh, itself. So. The nodal results uh, are mainly displacement, displacement, external forces, and reaction forces. So in our case, we're going to check first the displacements in Y, that is where we expect the different uh, deformation of the beams. Well, you can see the different values are changing with respect to the applied load. If we check the displacement on the other directions, we see that we don't have any. So that's expected because all load is applied on the Y direction. Now we can see the, the different reactions. So we can see the, the reaction in each, uh, at each support point. Again, we don't have reactions in X. This, if you remember, was free, the X direction also in Z. So we should have all our reaction uh, in the uh, Y direction. Exactly. So you can see the different values, maximum value, 130,000 and 39,000. And then we can do the same so for the different uh, applied uh, loads or the different load sets, the different reactions. Here we have compression but here we have as you can see a bit of traction well then uh, 
we can go to the element results. Here you will see the, the different results applied at the element size. If you see when I select any of these results, for example, stresses uh, in next, this, uh, this option now is uh, highlighted so we can interact with this. And this option means where uh, in the element we want to show the results. So the results are calculated at the, uh, at the integration points, the Gauss points, but uh, we have two layers. So we have the top and bottom layer uh, at the cross-section level. So that means we can represent uh, only one layer at the same time. So if we select, for example, one of two, we have a compression, so we are representing here the top layer, so the layer uh, in the, uh, at the top. Here we have traction, as it was expected, so we have probably cracking because we have a value for the stress higher, uh, much higher than the tensile capacity of the material. But then if we go to the bottom fiber we see as here uh, we sh now we have tractions as was expected and then compressions at the mid span i at the mid uh, beam if now we select different outputs uh, we don't see anything so it's uh, zero zero and this is completely expected because we have a plain stress uh, uh, we have sorry uh, applied loads on the y direction so we have only uh, deformations and stresses on the x direction so we have uh, plain dem deformation uh, in the in the x direction following the euler bernoulli uh, theory then now we can go to the strains and we should see similar results as for the stresses as is linear elastic so we have a linear elastic relationship between both and again we can check different loads and the different fibers or different layers for each applied load Well, we have uh, finished with the last uh, video. We have seen how to mesh or model first uh, prior to assign the different materials as well as uh, geometry to or uh, beam. Then we have seen how to interact with the computational engine, which options we can send to the to the computational core. And then we had a fast look onto the results interpretation. So we check different graphical visualization over all geometry of the different results that we can get from the analysis. In the next videos, we are going to work with the same model, but then we are going to extend uh, the model with a steel reinforcement. So we are, do, we are going to do the same linear elastic analysis with also linear elastic materials, but now we are going to include the steel reinforcement bars arranged on the cross section. Thank you and see you soon.